28 days, 6 hours, 42 minutes, 12 seconds. That is when the world will end. To let you guys know, she watched the theatrical cut, and I watched the director's cut. So, there's going to be a little transparency of difference in the meaning of the movie or or whatever. Or I might have a little more knowledge than she does about it. Anyway, to con- for, for Nikki to continue, I just wanted to let you guys know that's where we're at here. Welcome back, everyone, to our channel. Today, we're going to be talking about Donnie Darko 2001, Jake Gyllenhaal, Maggie Gyllenhaal, Patrick Swayze, Seth Rogen, Let's just put a little halo around him and the way he laughs. I love it. Um, Jenna Malone, love her. She's in so much. She must have, like, a great, like, publicist or something. Um, and the ever-so-cutie-pie Drew Barrymore. Yeah, short summary, from what I could gather, was Donnie has what is labeled as schizophrenia. I don't know. I kind of see it as, like, a multiple personality and a severe depression. But um, he tries to go off his medication. This movie so freaking flip-floppy. He's sleepwalking and he's destroying buildings, but apparently it's from this demon bunny that he sees, Frank. His name is Frank and he tells him to do these things. John, you want to tell us what it's really about? If you watch the director's cut, um, there are, each section of the movie is broken up once he gets the book. It takes up until he gets to the book that everything's broken down into chapters from the book. um, And they start to explain everything that's happening at that time. So what the book really entails, okay, so to be time travel, Donnie is what we call the living receiver. Right? And... He can travel between the primary universe, which is your normal universe, and the tangent universe, which is where Frank comes from. An apparition of the future from this tangent universe. So what he's experiencing is he's jumping back and forth. So when he's sleeping and sleepwalking, he's in the tangent universe. And when he's awake, he's in the primary universe. The only thing is, because the tangent universe started and... This is the only thing that's not understood in the film or even told by the director slash writer of this movie where it originated from. All we know is that a tangent universe, a side bracket universe started, and that's what Donnie is living at this point after the initial jet engine falling into his room. Right? When Frank is talking to him, when he experiences moments with the teachers the gym teacher the uh jim cunningham who's uh patrick swayze all these altercations all the things he does like the flooding of the school putting the axe in a brass statue that is literally impossible to penetrate Giggity. on your own with your own arms uh which he shoves the axe in and they can't even get it out Giggity goo. All these things happen in this tangent universe. So at the end of the movie, when everyone wake, like when when he dies and that that jet engine drops on him and he dies, and all of, you see all the different characters wake up and they're all kind of looking off in the distance, kind of like weirded out by something. It's because they did experience the tangent universe, but it's more like deja vu for them or a dream. They don't realize that it happened because they've it's gone back in time. So for them, it's a dream or a deja vu, right? So, But they all feel it, and they all know when he dies because that's what stops it. It ends it directly right there. The outcome of this, within a certain time, will be a black hole, and it will end everything. So in order to fix that, to stop that from happening... There's a living receiver that is given powers to see the movements of people, hence the bubbles coming out of people showing where they're going. Uh, He can see where he's supposed to go and he can see where other people are going, but he has to go back and fix. And it means a sacrifice. But if he doesn't go back, 
then the tangent universe will collapse on itself and create a black hole, and which will end everything. And that's why Frank tells him, in 28 days, the world will end if Donnie doesn't do what he's supposed to do. So Donnie does all these things in between, though, like exposing Jim Cunningham as a porn, child porn ring. This guy was a public speaker. But in order to return, you have to return the item that created this tangent universe in the first place, which is, and said, the jet engine, which his mother and daughter are on later on in the movie. They die because there was a fucking twister that took the plane out and took that jet engine and put it through that portal and sent it back in time to land on Donnie's bedroom. Oh, so they were going to die if he did. Oh, oh, wow. Okay. So because he died, they never went on that trip because they were too distraught to do the dance recital. They didn't go on that trip. That plane still may have crashed and still went back. Part of it still went back in time, but they weren't on it at this point. So Donnie saved them. Donnie Darko. What the hell kind of name is that? It's like some sort of superhero or something. Who is a therapist. When it all ends, I'd like to be able to breathe a sigh of relief and be okay, you know. And you see him do that. He goes, and he goes to sleep. And then the jet engine comes down. In the book, chapter 11 says, when the manipulated awaken from the journey to the tangent universe, they often haunted by the experience in their dreams. That is all of the people that he interacted with after he survived the first initial crash. That's why they all woke up when he died and kind of looked off in the darkness and felt sad and felt remorse and like didn't understand what was happening. Like to them, it was a dream. That's because they did live it. But they went, now they're twisted back in time and they think it's a dream. Chapter 12 says, the manipulated dead will set an insurance trap. The living receiver must ensure the fate of, the, of all mankind. The insurance trap is the girlfriend being killed by the car. Without that happening, he wouldn't have cared. He needed that insurance policy. Oh, I need to go back, sacrifice myself so she doesn't meet me. That doesn't happen. It is the catalyst that makes him want to go back and change it. So now there's another theory that it's Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ was like given three things that are bad. And that's what Jim Cunningham says. Say smoking, dr drugs, and uh, premarital sex. And Donnie Darko does all three of those things in that movie before he comes to the realization of fixing it all. The beginning of Jake Gyllenhaal, it was like, I don't know what he had done before that or just after, but to me, that was like my first introduction to him. And I thought, what a great actor. That's what I thought. I mean, the way that like, his face you know? is positioned in those scenes, you could see how when his eyes change. And I love when an actor does that because that means that they are fully embodied into the role. Yeah. You know, well, it's like, like in that sleep state and he's like, why are you dressed as a bunny? And of course, he's stabbing it in the eye where he shoots Frank at the end of the movie. Yeah. Okay. That foreshadowing of that. A company called Flower Films. Now, that was produced by her company for this film to be pressed. Without that and her support behind it, this film had no faith by even the people that made it. And it would have went straight to video, DVD, whatever. Because of her, they got a theatrical release, which may not have done well, but it planted the seed for people to watch it afterwards, and then it became a cult classic because of it. When I first watched it, I thought it was so strange, but I loved it because it was strange in, in an artsy type way. I find nothing but art. I mean, it's hard for me not to. Um, yeah. there, is a, there was a sketch in Donnie's room of an eye. Like, wow, that thing is really intense. It's really fucking awesome. To help you along with that, in the director's cut, there's a lot of imagery of everything happening in the eye dilating. And then, like, you'll see, like, 
the the rabbit face in his in his eyeball you'll see other images and then it jumps to another image so it's all happening in his eyes honestly when i watch this film it's just all art for fears scene when they jump out of the back of the school bus i don't know just the way that it's angled the way they came out is so strange and i love it because it catches that sun glare and oh my god i just fall in love with it i always have like an in love scene in like every movie and that's definitely for me that that love scene it like for me that like ultimate scene is at the end when it's playing mad mad world and the director even said when he picked that song he was playing he was like it was perfect the words were already perfect the sounding of it, like the whole imagery of it with the with what they were showing. Right. Everyone kind of like it like and that's like going back to that dream state. They all had a dream of it, but no, it wasn't a dream. It was a tangent universe, but to them it's a dream. Yeah, you know, I think when Grandma Death goes up to Donnie, I just think she looks so punk rock. I fucking love it. And that's like the reason I like it. And it's like, what does she say? Watch. Nikki and John's podcast, they're awesome. And I was just yeah. like, man, that lady is punk rock. Right? Remember the, the book slash movie that Drew Barrymore shows in the class called uh, The Watership Down? What was the inspiration for the bunny costume? Demonic kind of style scale. How many days was it that Frank said until the end of the world? I thought it was 28. 28 days. Guess what this movie was filmed in? 28 days. 28 days. Oh my god. They they packed all of that into 28 days. Yeah. Damn. Did you know a 31-year-old Vince Vaughn was first asked to play the role of Donnie? No. Uh-uh. Right? Uh-uh. No. Simply because he's like, I'm too old to play a teenager. <laughs> Then they offered it to guess who? Mark Wahlberg. I don't know how old Jake Gyllenhaal was, but I think they went with the better call to have Jake Gyllenhaal than make Mark Wahlberg. I think Ma- Mark Wahlberg would be too tough. I think when he plays any other yeah, role, he, the tough guy, right, it's it kind of difficult. Like, yeah. 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 I like both Vince and Mark very much, but they have their own style. Yeah, absolutely. I think Vince's humor would have been really well read in that film. Yeah. Probably wouldn't have made it as dry. Yeah. Humored. Um, as far as Mark, yeah, I think he would be kind of too tough. I wouldn't label him or buy it if he was a weak schizophrenic. Because like, Donnie's like a very uh, insecure character. He doesn't. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I can't from everyone I mean, Mark else. Wahlberg, he's than everyone else, but he's not tougher than everyone else, and that's what Mark Wahlberg would have been. But Mark Wa- Wahlberg is like he's gorgeous. There is no like, come on now, like you can't. I mean, for him yeah. to play like a a, a, sh- a shut in, you know, teenage boy is a little little unbelievable for me. <laughs> Absolutely, they actually had to get permission to talk about the Smurfs, which oh. they did. Contact the creator of the Smurfs, and they gave the go-ahead. First of all, Papa Smurf didn't create Smurfette. Gargamel did. She was sent in as Gargamel's evil spy with the intention of destroying the Smurf village. But the overwhelming goodness of the Smurf way of life transformed her. And as for the whole gangbang scenario, <laughs> I, it just couldn't happen. Smurfs are asexual. They, they don't even have reproductive organs under those little white pants. Everybody's looking at my tight pants. I got my tight pants. I got my tight pants on. This was so illogical, you know. A, a, a great scene because I think Jake Gyllenhaal says a fantastic theory about it. Then he what? says the, the great line. What's the point of living if you don't have if a dick? If you don't have a dick. That is the funniest fucking thing I think of. I like how the one kid just sits there like, what? And the other kid's like. <laughs> I don't know. It's just like <laughs> but I, I love that the guy gave them permission to do that because, I mean. Oh, yeah. That that was a good funny scene. It was a good yes. it was a good take on showing how smart Donnie is. Right, right. Because 
they're telling stupid lies and he called them out on their bullshit. So, <laughs> like, and, and I think that gives a good sh- show of character of what Donnie Darko is like. So without that, I feel like, I mean, they could have done it without it, but it was a great added in scene. And I'm glad, glad that the, uh, the owner of Smurfs allowed them to do that. Yeah, that is cool. When they're watching the football game and Donnie starts seeing all the t- tubes come out of his dad and, whatnot you hear on the tv they're talking about who's the boss an episode on who's the boss is about to happen where the girl steals the dad's car and gets caught and she doesn't have a license they were okay so flash forward to when donnie's in a trance with his uh therapist he starts he pulls it out and starts you know he, he didn't get that far but yes he starts, well, he, he's getting down to it and he's talking about who he wants to have sex with. The original name was supposed to be the girl from Who's the Boss? Alyssa Milano, right. Action to the, the commercial we heard earlier. Uh, but that actress was not comfortable with her being used in that context. So that's why they changed it to Christina yeah, Applegate. Um, with children. With children. And she was like, yeah, I don't care. Christina Algate is so badass. I fucking love her. She's so she said cool. Her name instead uh, when it was, was supposed to be Who's the Boss Girl. Yo, Alyssa Milano was like the, like, she was like the, oh my gosh, she's so cute girl. You know, right? it's like, oh, yeah. man, that's a bummer. But I mean, Christina <laughs> Algate, hello. She was like the badass blonde that everybody wanted. Like, she still I is, thought, man. Like, who, you fucking lying like, if you terrible. say no. <laughs> Like, you know what? It's every boy's fantasy anyway. Like, let's just put it in the movie. I don't care. Oh, now, Jake Gyllenhaal actually had a few minor, um, like, artistic uh, changes to this movie. Okay. Um, that wouldn't have happened with he was not in the movie. For one, the sister was not supposed to be Jake Gyllenhaal. It was supposed to be some other actress. I can't remember who now, but he insisted it being his sister, his real sister. Yeah. And it created such a better chemical dy- dynamic between the two of them because they're actually related. Right. Um, <laughs> and the director was like, oh, okay, sure. I like and- that scene at the dinner table where he calls her a fuck ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! And then the then the kid says, "What the fuck, <laughs> ass?" <laughs> and the dad and the Ely Snickers. That'd be me. Like I don't know what to tell you. Uh, <laughs> and they look so much point. alike that it's it's very believable, you know. And I mean, and she's a good actress too. Like, yeah, I so. love her. Yeah. Hey, uh, you know, hats off to him to giving her a bit better of a career too at that point maybe as well um and he actually was the one to to tell the director to change the rabbit's voice to that distorted voice that we hear wake up you know that distorted wake up voice that we hear him say originally it was just gonna be a regular voice it wasn't supposed to be distorted or anything uh i don't think and Jake was like, no, it should be, like, distorted. It's a tangent universe. It's different, you know. Right, it's not, right, yeah. It's good, a future. Good on that one. From a weird future that isn't going to happen because, well, I mean, he sacrifices himself, so it doesn't happen. It could have happened. Um, but like I said, <laughs> it being a tangent universe, tangent universes apparently in this book are not allowed to pertain for the end of time like a normal primary timeline. Otherwise, it creates, if, like you said, it collapses in on itself and becomes a black hole. And then everything is destroyed. Every timeline. So that's why he had to go back to his room. Now, when he was sitting there on his car, I don't know how he transposed back to his room. But I guess he just acknowledged that it was going to happen or something. Um, that's the only part that I don't really understand that wasn't really explained how he gets from the car to his room and back on the 20 or the 2nd of October opposed to being in, uh, where he was on the 30th or whatever um, 
that's the only part that's not really fully explained. But I guess just the acknowledgement of him laughing and just ending up back in bed being like, wow, was that all a dream in his head? And that's what other people think. They think maybe it was all a dream in his head, but why would all these other people wake up when it falls, when, when that jet engine falls down on him? Same time, if it was all a dream to him, it's because he did go into that tangent universe, come back in time to sacrifice himself to save his girlfriend and to save his mom and his sister from dying in that plane crash because Let's face it, if your kid just died, you would not be going to do your your uh, dance recital and then going on a trip for another yeah. dance recital. Interesting movie, and like, there's so many things to think about with that, you know? So, for this movie, I'm going to give it a whopping... Now, anyone who understands like, the scoring pattern that I do, three, anywhere in like 3.5 is a fantastic movie. I'm probably never, ever going to give anything a 5. Um, but I'm going to give this one now. I have to also think of the theatrical cut that most people are going to see. Uh, so I'm going to give it a 4.2, which is a huge score. But the only reason I'm giving it kind of a like I would have probably given a 4.4 if the director's cut was more regularly available for people to see. I mean, I personally yeah. would give this film just a four. I think it's it's so. I mean, you know, me being on the artsy side, I, I see so much of background instead of focusing. I know a lot of people focus on the art, but I just love how this is all kind of like woven in together. All right. So join us next week. We're going to be talking about Prisoners. Such an amazing film. It is just going to knock your socks off, I think, John. <laughs> so I am really excited to find this out just like the same as the rest of you guys and you guys please like subscribe hit the notification bell comment tell us what movies you'd like us to review and watch and we and maybe maybe you can become a guest on our show until next time bye